Hey, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It is July 6th, and it's a Monday. This episode is brought to you by my amazing rock and roll sponsor, Earthquaker Devices. Been a sponsor for over a year now. You've probably seen me in photos wearing their cool fucking octopus skull hat. Everybody always asks where I got that hat. Get it at their website, EarthquakerDevices.com. And while you're at the website, pick up some stomp boxes, some foot pedals, some fuzz, some delay, some uh, whatever. What I mean, you know, distortion. <laughs> distortion and fuzz, I never understood it. Aren't they the same thing? Anyway, uh, Earthquaker Devices, the best rock and roll foot stomp pedals, uh, rock boxes. What do you call them? You call them stomp boxes, you call them rock boxes, hit me up, tell me what you call them, foot pedals, magic, I call them magic, because without them your guitar sounds like shit, your guitar, your bass, your keyboards, whatever, I saw the Grateful Dead, they even had drums plugged into uh, some pedals, the sky's the limit, Earthquaker Devices, handmade in Akron, Ohio. An amazing sponsor. I love these guys. Get yourself a foot pedal. Hit them up. Tell them that you heard about it here on Let There Be Talk, and they'll hook you up with a nice, sweet deal. Earthquaker Devices. <laughs> All right, happy uh, Monday. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July weekend. What a great weekend uh, it was, you know. Uh, I'm going to dedicate this episode to two guys that donated to Let There Be Talk this week. Patrick Stimson and Charles Stanton. Thank you for the donations. Keeping the machine going, man. Keeping the machine going. Uh, Fourth of July weekend. What a weekend, man. I'm still fucking sitting here hooked on the Grateful Dead. It's been eight days since I've seen them, and it's been nonstop, 24-7 dead over here at the hut. Just recently discovered the Blues for Allah record. I guess on, uh, what was it, Thursday night in Chicago. I've been following it, of course, like an obsessed lunatic. Like it's a, like, you know, some of you people like sports, apply that to rock and roll and you got me. So I've been following it nonstop. What songs they playing? How's the show? What's up with the audiences? And uh, I guess so Thursday night they played most of this record, Blues for Allah. I had no idea about this fucking record. I am not a dead expert, but I'm going to become one. That's my goal for the rest of 2015. Know every song, know every fact, cruise around. I'm the uh, deadhead that jumped on when the band played their last gig. (laughs) How fucking wrong time. Wrong timing. I grew up in San Francisco Bay Area. Really? And I'm finally getting it? I mean, it's been slowly. I've been loving it over the last 15 years. But now I'm just full-blown hooked. I'm a dead metalhead. Ah, that doesn't sound good. I better go with Metal Deadhead. That's better. I like Metal and the Dead. Metal Deadhead. Hashtag Green Deans. Metal Deadhead. Yeah! (laughs) Uh, Anyway, this record, Blues for Allah. I fucking love Steely Dan. And I love 70s rock. And that's what this record... it, It has a Steely Dan vibe, which I can't believe I didn't even know about this thing. Anyway, so, uh, wow, it's like having a new band in my life with millions of records and recordings, so it'll never get old, which is cool. Check it out. Blues for all, and that's my suggestion this week. Uh, let's see. Fourth of July weekend, what'd you guys all do? I posted up a Instagram saying every Fourth of July reminds me of Jaws, the movie, the film. And that is true, man. I guess it's Shark Week. I'll never forget it. If you have uh, new to this uh, Let to Be Talk, I did an episode with Dean Carr a couple years back. He's a famous 
rock photographer. He also directed uh, Rain and Blood live with Slayer. He's done Deftone videos. He's a lunatic. He's done some amazing uh, Dave Matthews videos. He's next level as far as it goes as uh, photography and videos. He and I, uh, a few years back, went and dove with the Great White Sharks in the Guadalupe Islands. We talked about it. And uh, a lot of people think that's crazy. But in my entire life, I wanted to dive with Great White Sharks. I watched Jaws when I was nine. And never forgot it. It's been my favorite film in the top three, hands down. And I just can't believe how fucking great Jaws is every time I see it. They just had the anniversary screenings this week. And uh, 40 years of Jaws. Everything, uh, everything that I like is getting old. The Dead, 50 years. Metallica, 32. What, 32, 33? Uh, Jaws, 40. Insane. Good shit, man, lass. And that's what this episode's about. Good shit. My guest is Sean Patton. I love this guy. We talked about how come there just can't be only good shit. How come it can't be like that? I just, I'll never understand it. And I never understand people that just uh, go for mediocre. But, you know. To each their own, I guess. Some people just don't have passion in their body where they don't fall in love with something. When I see a car that I love, I go, I stop in my tracks. Holy shit, 68 RSSS Camaro. Look at that. You know, I see a sweet fucking motorcycle. I stop. Look at it. An incredible movie. I'm flicking through channels in a hotel room. Godfather. I don't care where it's at. I stop and watch the rest of it. I like good shit, and I uh, grew up with passion. And, uh, you know, I think people that listen to this show have passion, which is cool. Because I get emails from you guys all the time saying, I love what you're talking about. Which is kick-ass, man. Makes me feel good. Sean Patton is amazing. He's a funny fucking guy. He's a great dude. And, man, did we... uh, we talked about some stuff. I mean, we, we hit it off on some uh, so many levels. It's the guy, you know, he's one of those dudes, and I'm like, oh, well, that's going to be a lifelong friend, you know? He speaks the truth. He's honest. He's funny. And uh, he grew up in New Orleans. That's pretty wild, you know, to hear about uh, people that grew up in New Orleans fucking around on Bourbon Street as a young, young, uh, young adult. Learning life. He's going to be on season two of Meltdown at the end of the month. Do not miss that. We talk jerky boys. Oh, my God, man. You ever, you ever, somebody talks about something you forbid, you know, completely forget about, and then you're like, oh, and then you just engulf yourself in it. As soon as he left, I was all over jerky boys again. My eye. I play wrong note. Boo, doo, doo, cobra bite my eye. <laughs> Sean Patton's the guest. Before I bring him on, just a couple quick things. I was just in Denver all weekend. I cannot thank Wendy and the Comedy Works and all the employees and everyone that came out. My God, what a week for me, man. Shit's getting good for me. I hope I hope it doesn't change. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it was good this week. I can say that. Shit was good this last week. Anyway. It was an honor to do the Denver Comedy Works, headline it. My first time headlining there. What an amazing week. Everybody that came out. I had two guys drive from Utah, eight hours. Eight hours to come see me. Those guys rule. Talk about 1,000 friends. Those guys are in there. Met D from Colorado on Twitter came. D from Colorado, he rocked it. Uh, everybody that I, I met was just fantastic this week, and it was pretty damn positive. And the condo that the Comedy Works has, I oh, my God. I didn't want to leave. Man, that condo's going to fuck up 90% of the comedians because it's better than their house. <laughs> uh, I wanted to say this real quick before I get into the episode that the owner of the Denver Comedy Works, uh, Wendy, I, I talked to her on Periscope, and uh, I... I 
been on stage over 30 years, five and a half years doing comedy, 25 years playing rock and roll. In those 30 years, I've met about five people in the biz that you go, oh, fuck, this person gets it. And uh, the main one would be Bill Graham. Uh, growing up in the Bay Area, I, I feel so lucky to be around a man like Bill Graham who, who cared about the musicians, who cared about the venue, who cared about the sound, the, who cared about the bill, the bookings, everything. That's a true artist in itself. That's not a businessman. That's an artist who wants to put on shows for the people so they have a great time. That's the difference between businessman and someone with passion. And that's what this woman Wendy has, man. She could easily just cash in, make all this money off comedy boom right now, and just squirrel it away for herself. But she doesn't. She takes all the money and puts it right back into the business. The room is amazing. The sound is amazing. The lights are amazing. The fucking condo, like I said, is million-dollar condo. The people have smiles on their faces. The rooms sound great. The fans are great because the room's great. They're all, they're all in it on their, you know, in, in on it. Anyway, so Wendy, I've decided, really is my Bill Graham of comedy. She's an artist herself, man. And thank you, Wendy, for having me out there. And also, Denver, I will be back out there in two weeks with Mark Marin. I cannot wait to see you guys again. And I can't wait to work with Mark. It's going to be crazy. We're doing uh, the Paramount Theater in Denver, and then we'll be out in Boulder. I'll also be in Portland uh, this weekend with Marin. This week in Portland, I'm coming. And also, tomorrow night, Tuesday, I'll be hosting, or not hosting, uh, judging the roast battle with Jeffrey Ross, Tony Hinchcliffe, and my man Brian Moses. Toronto, Brian Redband, we're almost there, only a few days away, Toronto. We'll be out there the 18th. Hit highontrees.com. Get your tickets. Toronto, don't sleep. This is going to be epic. Live podcast and comedy show. And uh, San Jose, you're getting some Death Squad Del Razor too. July 30th, Brian Redband and I coming for you at the San Jose Improv. I love all you guys, and I love your, uh, your amazing emails and tweets. Don't stop. You guys are great. Keep rocking. If you want to donate, hit me at Dean Del Rey at Yahoo.com. Here we go. Yeah, what's happening? Another episode of Let to Be Talk. Great guest today, comedian Sean Patton is here. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm, I'm kind of blown away by your view. Oh, yeah, it's good, right? Look at that. See that window? It looks dirty. Yeah. But that's not dirt. It's uh, an old tint that has just melted off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can't get it off. That's good, though, because it forces you to, if you want a better view, open the window. Yeah, I usually Be open one the with nature. Yeah. Uh, yep. this, is, this is cool, man. It's great. It's I love it here. Uh, for, for, I mean, I wish, I don't know if anyone's ever just tried to describe this to your listeners, but this is the view that, uh, Dean has the view that any movie you've ever been set, or that any movie you've ever seen set in Hollywood in the 70s or 80s. Yeah. You have that view. Yeah, the perfect line, <laughs> you know I mean? the perfect line of palm trees. Right, right, right. You know, you know what's funny is uh, for the first five years I lived here, I had no view. There was a giant tree right there. Oh. I couldn't see shit. So uh, a new guy bought the house across the street, and he goes, I don't like this tree. I have no idea why he had tree hate, but he cut it he down. He took it down. And then he just raised my place to the next fucking level. Yeah, dude, you're actually... Should think the one time tree hates cool. Yeah, right. The one time you're like, all right, this one can go. And the one time <laughs> a neighbor was good. Yeah, yeah. true, true. <laughs> but I mean, you've got you're in the hills. You got the trees. You got the there's smog today. Yeah, we you got don't some see good smog, smog that much anymore. No, nope. bam. Yeah, up here in the hills, man. I'm just waiting for a guy to bust through that door, fucking brandishing a chrome 45. Yeah, or named Tito, or, or some fireworks like uh, boogie <laughs> yeah. nights. You know what I yeah, mean? Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! How you doing today, man? Uh, today's today's a good one. I had, you know, I had that 
Do you ever have this happen where like you do a set and it's good and you're sort of like even even you know I've been doing comedy almost 14 years. You're riding on that high still. still oh yeah. Still to this day, you're still like, all right, fuck yeah. And then you go to a, the next show, and you it's almost like you forget that bombing is even possible. Yeah. Because you're like, ha, comedy's just amazing. Why wouldn't this be awesome? And then that same show with the same material, just <laughs> you know, Dude, like that's the weirdest thing uh, I think of comedy, right? And then and then you're and then you just spend the rest of the night like. Don't talk to me. I'm inconsolable right now. <laughs> it's, I'm it's a broken ins- human. It's insane, right? <laughs> yeah. That feeling. Like, especially when you go on a good run of maybe like two, three months, oh. everything's working, and you go, I figured this out. I'm next. I'm, I'm on to the next path. I'm, I'm one of those guys now. I, I'm, 100%. Man. And then you just get a dick handed to you. Right to you. And you can't believe it, right? <laughs> and not a, and it's, and you know what it is? It's the kind of dick that even if you're a gay man, it's like the kind of, they, they, like, oh, this is a crooked dick. I, I like, <laughs> I don't like crooked dicks. You know, it's like it's just a dick that no, not a, tr- no one's attracted. To yeah, it. yeah. It's basically just a fucking this infected a, dick. This is a limp. Harpies crusted dick. Yeah, it's the worst, man. I, I, yeah. I really don't understand. And sometimes I'll try to figure it out. Like maybe uh, it was. I, most of the time, it's just me. I came off too angry, or they just weren't into me, or whatever. I, I know yeah. that. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'll get up there, and, rawr, 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 you know, and then it's like, oh fuck, I gotta, yeah. I gotta fix this somehow. I gotta chill. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think too, man. I've learned that doing. I think that the secret to this, I'm not going to say this business, I'm going to say this craft, Yeah, is getting better at riding, riding out these like low points. Yeah. You know, because I think that's, it's like a cyclical thing where like, like you just said, like for a few months, it's like, yes. And then unfortunately for never as long, but it seems like longer. Yeah, it's only usually you know, but for the then for a month it's just like fuck, and you're just yep swinging and missing, and you got this you got this great fucking premise cooked up, but you can't figure out how to make other people laugh at it, and then you're just every show you're frustrated because you do people are coming up to you afterwards and being like oh yeah you know hey good job and like yeah. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't you know, can tell yeah have you ever seen have you seen the movie Whiplash yeah yeah I love it that's what uh, that movie's so excellent. For one line, really, it all boils down to that one scene when they're in that bar and he's telling the story about how the band leader threw a chair at Charlie Parker. Yeah. He's like, good job. What if he just said good job? Yeah. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, That's the worst two words in, art, in, in music or whatever. He would have known that you sucked. You know? Exactly. But it's like, ah, and then you're just dealing with, and then other people are. And then, it all, and then you start noticing, like, you go to shows and they're like, all right, so you're going up first. You're like, Oh, okay. yeah. All right. First, cool. I'll, it's fine. You know, it's like shit. And then you get in your head about that, where you're like, "Are they putting me up first because they want me to open the show big, or because they're like, I don't know? Have you seen his past few sets? Yeah, he is fucking stinking it up. Isn't that crazy? You're only as good as your one great set. I know. He just can't. And then, and then basically, fucking. And then when you just when you're about to, you're like, "All right, if it doesn't go well tonight, I'm retiring." And then it doesn't go well that night, and then you talk yourself out. Of yeah, quitting. yeah, right. And then the next set's usually good. It's just, and then you're back. But then, one, then, then it's all about getting back on that high and being like, "Fuck, when's the next low?" Yeah, ah, there won't be another. Yeah, no, it's inevitable. It's all confidence. Yeah, that's man. that's what comedy is. I've realized. Mm-hmm. You know, it's weird. I played music like 25 years, and one thing will never happen playing a band. They are never not going to love your hit song. I know. Meaning, like, your hit joke, like, uh, of that year, your closer or whatever, it could tank sometimes. And you're like, what the fuck happened there? Exactly. But a hit song, I mean, Stones go on, they do Start Me Up, you know, or Satisfaction. No one's going like, yeah, I don't know about this tone. I was wrong before. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, so pe- some people, it's like a Pavlovian thing. Like, they just, they start hearing Painted Black. Yeah, and they don't have an. Op- they're like, why wouldn't I fucking love this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what do you yeah. mean? Question painted black. Yeah, right. Well, you know what's fun? You know what? Actually, I wonder if there's any been any, ever been anything like this with bands, like, like bands like of the Stones ilk. Like, 
interviewing and being like, what is your least, individual members, your least favorite song? Yeah. That you got, your least favorite hit. Yeah. Like, which one do you hate? Which one, when you're fucking performing in front of 30,000 people at some, you know, American awards event, you see on the set list, and you're like, fuck. Oh, you know, well, all the bands. I, Every I, band. Yeah, there's always those guys like, oh, you know, we don't like to play those hits or whatever. Yeah. And that's a weird thing. But with comedy, you can kind of understand it. Three years goes by, and they're like, do that one joke. You know, yeah. and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, that's a weird vibe. It's like the- you're some kind of fucking jukebox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that, is, that is like... Uh, you know, well, that's another thing too. Like, I know guys who, like, will have bits online that'll have like you know a million views. Yeah, and they'll still do it live. And to me, that's like crazy. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, like it's live. It's on. Yeah. It's a million views. On, it's 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 captured. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's done. It's there. If people want that, they can go there. And I and you know they're like yeah it's crazy because I start doing the bit and I can see people like mouthing along with it and I'm oh, like that would drive me crazy me too that would freak me out I would be like simultaneously flattered yeah but also like oh no they're yeah. on to me yeah yeah yeah, yeah they're, <laughs> they're on to they me. know what's coming around the corner <laughs> I always find it weird when the comedy club you're doing that week puts one of your bits on the website you can't oh, do that bit. i hate that dude. i hate that right because yeah. then you start the bit maybe you don't know it's on the website you start the bit and you go this bit kills always what happened and then you later you go oh it was on the fucking website you know dude yeah i mean yeah <laughs> i mean years ago i want to say like 2012 maybe even um i did a set at the laugh factory that's why i don't do sets at the laugh factory anymore because they recorded it and put it up online now that bit specifically, that set, it's got, you know, not a lot. Like I know that when you got long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, think I was on that show that night. Probably so. It was yeah. it, That was back when the Laugh Factory was making its attempt to be a good club again. Yeah, it was. And Dur- it got close. Duran was doing the yeah. show called. Um, uh, it was a Wednesday night show. It, it was called, uh, it was like, Dot Com. Yeah. Dot Comedy. Dot Comedy, yes. Yep. Yeah. Awesome shows, it right? It was a fucking great show. And yeah. Then the, but, but, like,. I didn't. They put that. They put that on the line without my permission because I didn't even realize it just happened. And like that bit, you know, it's got like a hundred thirty something thousand views, and it's generally positive rated, positively rated. Yeah. But there's two bits on there that are just dead now to me. Yeah. That were pretty new then. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. and I, I was like, ah, but too many people had shows, and it's I've had people in audiences shout it like spicy butthole. Oh, yeah. I remember that particular night I was there because that was the first time I seen you. Yeah. And you were doing the spicy butthole joke. I was laughing my ass off. Thank you. And I I liked it, but that's also a bit that I was like, that was in, that was, it was cooking. It was simmering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it still probably had about 10, 15 more minutes to be on the stove. That's an interesting thing when we talk about Mm -hmm. that bit because it was the first time I had seen you Mm -hmm. and I was starting to kind of uh, really get into alt comedy and I was like, a lot of these alt guys are pretty dirty. You know, like that was a dirty bit. And it's hilarious when you think like, like alt comedy, people think of it as like comic books and uh, you ever, yeah. And then it's, Uh. you know, that bit was dirty. It's also just funny to me that I ever got branded alt right like, i mean i guess i get it but like like because I, I i when i when i lived here in 2006 i didn't really notice i knew you know there were shows at ucb every you know and I, that's where i was hanging out because uh, ucb was pretty new back then right but the comics who i was watching there were like andrew donnelly and anthony jeselnik you know and guys like you know it was like anthony jeselnik like people would you say Anthony's alt? Because then it's also like Anthony's like the most classic example of like set up punch yeah. that there is. Yeah, really. I love it. Super like, yeah, edgy. Super edgy. You know, like, I mean, so, but then when I moved to New York in 2007, that's when I truly noticed a divide between alt comics because there's just so much comedy in New York. It really stands out. Right. Guys like Eugene Merman who are fucking huge, but who don't set foot anywhere near a comedy club. Right. You know, like that guy doesn't do the cellar. Right. You know what I mean? Like that guy, but he's got his own world that he built out in Brooklyn and it's crazy and it's insane and it's beautiful. And, but that's when I first started to notice. But then to me, it started to get weird when guys were using the phrase, in my opinion, 
to the point where it was almost like it was blinding them to like guys would be like, "Oh, I can't do that room. It's too alt." And I'm like, "Well, no, I mean, but that's just a that's just a thing yeah. that bloggers say." Yeah, yeah, not, not only, real. Not only that though, but why real. would you like <laughs> limit yourself? Like yeah, exactly. I I talked to Pete Holmes about it. I like to walk in all worlds. All and worlds. Plus, plus, alt to me was never a uh, a style. To me, it was just the rooms. They yeah. were alternative to popular exactly. clubs. The exactly. comedy didn't have any kind of uh, uh, samey same. Because no. when I'd go, I'd go, these guys are all different. It was just alternative rooms, you know? Yeah, I mean, because I know, I know, I, I, I had one night where, like, uh, I saw Gaffigan. It was when I first moved to New York. One night where I went to uh, stand up New York for the first time just to like watch a show and Gaffigan was on it. And then I went later that night to a place called Rafifi, which is now, unfortunately, turned into a fucking <laughs> – turned into a, uh, an urban outf- – not an urban outfitters, a Buffalo exchange. Oh, hell yeah. But for years, it was like the alternative, the alternative comedy mecca. Right. You know, it was like every night they just – it was a bar. Kind of like the meltdown of New exactly. York. Exactly. Minus the – Take the meltdown, throw away the comic book shop part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And replace it with a bar. And there yep. you go. But uh and then, you know, later that night I saw Gaffigan there. Yeah. And both times crushing it. And the same thing with Dimitri Martin. You'd see Dimitri Martin at comics, you know, kill it because Dimitri. People are like, Dimitri's alt. I'm like, he tells jokes. Yeah. He plays sure he plays a guitar, but it serves as like background music. Yep. Yeah. Sure he has illustrations on a board, but that's basically just jokes drawn on a goddamn board. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? like, like Nick Thune play guitar, Thune, but yeah. they're classic, you know, yeah. classic jokes. And Thune doesn't even play the guitar anymore. Not anymore, yeah. And, and he doesn't even do those, like, one-liners anymore. Nah, he's, yeah. you know? to- totally different guy. He's a dad now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got stories to <laughs> he's got tell. stories about a kid. Yeah. He does have one story that he won't tell on stage, or maybe he just, maybe he has by now, about having to pull a hardened turd out of his young child's ass. Oh my god! Because it was, and his kid was like crying, and I don't want to ruin it for him if he's yeah. ever planning on doing it on stage. Yeah. But like, it was. Ri- it's like a. He told it to me once, and I was just like, li- like literally, like yeah. knee slapping. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, if you're not doing that on stage in two weeks, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start lying and saying that I've got a son. Yeah. <laughs> like, so my son, yeah. he's uh, 12 yeah. months. For this bit, I've got a son. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now you grew up in New Orleans. Yeah, man. Which, with- by the way, I got to say, uh, I, I didn't know where you grew up until I saw you. I went to the live taping of Ari's uh, This is Not Happening. Oh, yeah, man. And those were, those were I, fun. I think that night I laughed. And, and see, I, I'm still not bitter or jaded or anything, so I love comedy. Mm-hmm. And so I also go watch comedy. Right. And, and I love it. And that night, besides seeing a couple of Louis C.K. sets and a Burr set that have knocked me out of my fucking face, <laughs> your set and T.J. Miller's, I had oh, to move yeah, away from man. the camera because I was laughing so fucking hard. <laughs> I was wrecking it over in the right corner. Thanks, man. But your set about the guy coming out of the closet is the fucking funniest shit ever. And that's when I found out your roots of New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. I actually went to that guy's wedding um, last year in New Orleans to a woman. He, a woman? Yeah. It's the craziest shit, man. Like... Like everything, you know, like that. That's one of those stories too that people are like, you know, because everybody questions. Like, you know, is everything, is every story every comedian tells on stage a hundred percent true, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one of those stories that's like, man, I wish I could make up fucking stories like that. You yeah, know, right. I, mean, I'd, I'd I always a, I'd say a, that too. I'd be a novelist. Yeah, I would be writing you like, know? Yeah. Uh, you know, like. Uh, King Kong films, exactly, you know, man. like Godfather and shit. That like, was one of those just purely crazy nights that I even realized while it was happening. Like, this is what is this? Yeah, am I a fucking character in some someone's <laughs> book? But like, he, um, it was crazy, man. Like he, we were. Early, I mean, he was. He's a few years younger than me. He's like three or four years younger than me. Three years. But yeah, he came out then and yeah. was just openly gay uh, for a few years. Like you know, Katrina hit. He went, you know, came, he was one of the first, he was back in the city before I was. Um, and he was, you know, until around 2008, uh, 2009 or so, or so, he was just this openly gay friend of mine in New Orleans. And then he had a real bad experience with a guy. Like he got his heart broken by a guy 
and freaked out and joined the Navy. Because he was also like, I'm about to be, he was like in his late 20s when he joined the Navy. He was like, I'm fucking, I'm not doing anything with my life here. I'm just being a party boy and fuck this. And he's always been a swimmer. He's always been like a water guy. When he's like, I want to be a diver. And so he goes into the Navy. And then as a gay man, as a gay man. And then a few years into being in the Navy, uh, he starts sort of questioning if he's really gay. This is wild. I know. <laughs> he goes, he does it all in reverse. Right. Like he goes, a gay man into the Navy and then basically goes back into the closet. Wow. And meets a woman in the you Navy. You know why? He was around so many men in the Navy. He goes, like, we mm, suck. Yeah, this is too men much. Men are terrible. Too much. <laughs> and then he fucking married a fellow Navy woman. But like, that's the thing. He's pretty open about it. And he, I was talking to him about it at his wedding. I'm like, she, she, she knows you were just gay for a decade almost. And yeah. He was like, man. I don't know if I'm gay. I don't know if I'm straight, but I just love her. Wow. And that's what it is. It that's like, pretty right, badass cool, and cool. wild, right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, that's another that's thing. That's a true bisexual. Yeah. That's just, that's one of those things, too, where it's like people always talking about identifying, you know, transgender, identifying as male, identifying as female. It's like, yeah, I, I know a guy who just identifies as sexual and yeah. shows a woman, but, you know, uh, was it definitely. A wild and out gay guy for a while. That's a great story. If people yeah. haven't seen it, it's on YouTube, I believe. Uh, Sean if you Patton. Actually, if what's you it to, called? Well, if you go to my website. Uh, oh, there to, you go. To SeanOliverPatton.com. It's my full name. Uh, d- I got a .com there. Yeah, it's just on there, under videos. It's, it's like, so fucking funny. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing season two. Oh, are you? Yeah, but we, I, I was talking to Ari. Ari's the only guy possible who could have his own TV show. On Comedy Central, that he's, I'm like, when are we doing it? And he's like, I don't know. I'm trying to push it back. You know, I just don't want to rush it. It's like <laughs> anyone else I know, everyone else I know who has a TV show lives their life by that show schedule. Yeah. And Ari's just like, eh, let's, let's, let's delay it a few. I want to do it in like July. I'm saying October. <laughs> I want to do it this time. Yeah, I, don't wanna, I just want to fucking, you know, breathe a little bit and yeah. wait. But that's, I guess that's the kind of why Ari's successful to begin with yeah yeah he kind of has like a, his ah, own rules fuck you attitude i'll do it when i get there get around to it what are the t- what are the topics this time i don't know yet he that's the other thing i don't think they know yet right but that's the show that like you know the shows like that there just need to be that is the thing about comedy central i will say now is like comedy central is one of the more interesting networks to me now because like it went through a phase where it was just garbage where everything on it was just sort of like oh wow and then in the past five years you know with like schumer's show and with key and peel yeah great shit like, those right? are both just two amazing sketch shows and then with the some of the stand-up like the meltdown the way they're, they're awesome. the way they're shooting that and ari's show this is not happening it's totally like, hip they're, now they're or, or they're just they're at least they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is pushing the envelope. Yeah. And not just – because I did Live at Gotham, you know, whatever the fuck that was, six years ago. And when you watch that show, it's just garbage. It's yeah. just like they pump – fake. I remember during the filming, they pump fake smoke into the room. Yeah. Even though everyone on the fucking planet knows you cannot smoke cigarettes in bars in New York, the first city to ban cigarettes Hilarious. in the U.S. Yeah. They still want to make it look smoky in uh. Gotham. <laughs> and it's all these big camera sweeping – I don't know why the fuck comedy specials are so obsessed with a goddamn jib shot. Yeah, that sweeping yeah. like crane. it's U 2s Octung Baby tour. It's so fucking you know? dumb, dude. Like one of the best comedy specials, in my personal opinion, that I've seen come out in the past few years is Stanhope's most recent. Yeah, the Beer Hall Push. Have you yeah. seen that one? No, I haven't seen that. God one. damn it, it's fucking golden. A, yeah. I mean, for the, here are the top three reasons. Number one, Doug. It, him. Of course. Like, he's wearing a fucking leisure suit, which yeah. apparently that's his new thing. Yeah, I know, he right? He shows up in, like, thrift store leisure suits, which is fucking fits him perfectly. <laughs> just, just straight up, like, a <laughs> Caddyshack, yeah. you know, golf outfit exactly. almost. You know? Fucking Carnival Barker. Yeah. From the, car- the Carnival Barker from Under the Rock. So great. But his material, like, this chunk of material is just, it's been a long time since a comedy special ended, and I was like, that's it? Yeah. Wait, that was that was an hour? Yeah. Like it, it it's so fucking brilliant everything he talks about. But 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 here the main th- not the main thing, but 
the way it's shot is it's how a comedy special should be shot. It's on Doug the entire fucking time. They don't have shots of audience members laughing. Yeah. They don't have these sweeping shots so you can get a gauge of how big the room is yeah. or how, oh, look at that huge theater they're performing in. Yeah. They must be a big deal. Yeah. And to my knowledge, it was some spot in Portland that only seats like 80 people, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because it's state the camera's on him. Yeah, it's and like Marin's Stinky Pain. Exactly. It's, that's a good one, too. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. And like, that's how... But those are... That's when you go back to, like, prior specials. Yeah. The fucking... That's how I want my special to shoot, which I'm shooting, hopefully, at the end of this year. Like, dark. You don't ever fucking see the audience. It's yeah. not necessary. Yep. And it's on the f- performer. Same with Burrs. You never see oh, the Burrs crowd. Oh, Burrs is awesome. Yeah, yeah Burrs is... You never see the crowd or anything. You're the black and white one, you know? Burrs is one of those, like... I, get, I still remember the first time I saw Bill Burr was 2009 at a comedy club called Comics in New York, which is now gone, unfortunately, because it was the best club in New York. Is that right? It was a fucking amazing. It was everything about it. The way it was set up, the way the staff treated you, the way you were sort of like, when it was a great show, it was a fucking great show. The problem was it was in the meatpacking district. Oh, and the rent this, went through the roof. And, and also... The audiences they wanted, they couldn't get to come out to that part of Manhattan. Oh, yeah. And that that same club in the East Village, or where the stand is now. Yeah. Th- that's the best club in New York, if you ask me. The stand. It's, yeah. I mean, the cellar is still great. It's still got its, you know, it's the cellar. But it, to me, the cellar sort of, uh, it. they really only want one style of comedian. Is that right? They, like- want, they want all, they want every single comedian to be a David Tell. Right, that's what they want over and over again. They and which is great. David Tell is a fucking great comedian, and there's a lot of guys there who try and do David Tell. Yeah, there's also a lot of great, you know, Dan Soder, Joe List, Mark Marin. I mean, I'm sorry, Mark Norman, another yeah. New Orleans guy, New Orleans guy, um, and a bunch of others. Those are like the younger crew of guys there, and they're all amazing and original. But there's also a lot of old school guys there who just kind of like follow it. A tells lead, yeah. But then you got guys like Big J Okerson and yeah, he's great. Who's fucking amazing? Yep. Uh, who's who's that guy's that crowd? That guy makes crowd work looks like 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 a superpower. Yeah, I just went. Uh, God, he's or so I just did a weekend good. with him uh, a few weeks back in uh, San Diego. We had a killer time. We both love rock. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We both uh, did a lot of drugs. I hope <laughs> yeah. that guy loves rock. He wears fingerless gloves in the summer. <laughs> I mean, like, but yeah, Jay. yeah, but you got guys like Jay. Who are kind of like now you've got guys at, at the cellar doing Jay. Yeah, that's hilarious. You know, because he's now like one of those like fucking becoming more of a stalwart. He's fucking great. But I feel like the cellar, it's it's a great club. I take nothing away from it. But I the stand, I feel like, is a little more open with how they book, and they're a little more like they try and vary it up. Yeah. So where it's not just the same thing over and over again. Like you'll see Janine Garofalo, then, you know, Louie, and then a fucking musical. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone with a violin on stage. Not Maybe not a violin, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I got you. And then, but. uh, Yeah, like here in town, yeah. some of the rooms just book the same 10 dudes every day. Oh, yeah. You oh, know? Yeah. And. Oh, yeah. uh I always wonder, like, you know, you live by a style, you die by a style. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, rock clubs. When I was growing up, it wasn't a rock club. It was a music club. Yeah. So they'd have Jerry Garcia, and then the next day they'd have Danzig. You know what I'm saying? It's all over the fucking board. Whatever was good, they would have it. You know, and I think yeah. that's where the store is killing it right now because it just got a big selection of all kinds of fucking different styles. Yeah, the store store definitely... Stepped it up, yeah, right. You know? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, like the that, that's a good point you just brought out. Like rock club music, like everyone. Uh, this is what this is why the industry can ruin it. Industry, the industrialization of any art form can ruin it because everyone's so hell bent on categorizing. Yeah, like you just grunge, said, exactly. metal, and it's like the only category should be good. Yep, that exactly. Is it. That's that it. Is it. What's the category? Good. good. That should be Doesn't the fucking, fucking club's matter. names. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm, going, I'm doing the good tonight. I'm doing the good club tonight. <laughs> well, what's the good club? It, that's what it's called. Yeah. Good, good, good comedy club. Yeah, good shit. It's mm-hmm. the good shit club. <laughs> yeah, that really, that really is it, man. Everyone's like, well, what is it alt? Is it mainstream? No, it's good. Yep. 
And, it does, and no one – and people but, – but, but because – Marketability. That's the problem. But yeah. People don't realize that's the that's the thing. This is why the industry's fucked. Is because no one wants to take time to develop anything. Yeah. Whereas, like something, if you if you were like, all right, from now on, we're only going to have good. That might take two years. Yeah. To really take off. Yeah. Whereas, like, no, no, no. It's Latina mainstream. Yeah. Female. Or male, or doesn't matter. Just it's here's a, it's here's the subgenre. It's it is loud, uh, big on Vine. You know Vine, yeah, <laughs> big on go. Vine. Boom, two weeks. You know, yeah. and like no one wants to take time to be like, let's just make it good. Like instead of force, like and that's happening to a lot of while opening up. Yes, dude, everyone should have their shot to fucking have their voice heard. The problem is they're taking like, oh, we got to take this young Latino. Yeah. Or this young black kid yeah. and force him into the spotlight when they're not ready. Yeah. So that they get devoured. Exactly. So, so that Christelle Alonzo, I fucking, I don't know her, yeah. but I did my half, we did the half hours together. Yeah. Right? And I remember watching her half hour and thinking she was very, very funny. Yep. And she was very cool. And then all of a sudden she gets this TV show, which is great for her, but it's also like, was she ready to have a TV show? Right. Was she ready? Yeah. Not, and I'm not taking anything away from her, but her TV show got canceled. Maybe because she needed a little longer to develop that TV show. Yeah. You know? But no, fucking execs are like, no, we don't want to take time yeah. to develop Christella. Well, they should We sprink- just want to throw it out there. They should sprinkle you know? that person into their other hit sitcoms mm-hmm. as guest roles. Right, right. Start learning the machine. You know what I mean? Exactly. You've been on twenty different guest spots. Now you have your own show. Well, you know? And it's like, and it's like what they just did was they were trying so hard to to give her a chance because she was Latina that she they, they they might end up fucking over other Latina comedians, right? Because she maybe she just needed one more year to develop that show, to develop as a writer, to develop, and like you said, and now because that show got canceled, there's some other young Latina female comedian. Who wants to do a show that fucking dipshit execs are going to be like, ah, but you know, we took the chance with Costella. Yeah. And it didn't pan out. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be five more years before we do that again. Yeah, yeah. It's like, ah, you fucking assholes. Yeah. The, and then they name it after the show. Like, ah, it's the Christella exactly. or whatever it is. It's the Whitney or it's the, yeah. you know, whatever. They want to they want to name it after something. And you every, know? Yeah. And everybody wanted to hate on Whitney, but it's like, man. I, I I don't know her at all, really. Yeah. Now, but I but I've had some encounters with her. and She was always very cool, and she was a workaholic. She fucking busted her ass. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. When people they hate her somebody, in, yeah, yeah. you know. For I always ask people, you know, like if they go ah fuck that person or whatever, I go oh what what happened? Because I just want to see if they have something legit, and they go yeah. like ah oh, they're on TV. I'm like, you're an asshole. Oh, they're successful. You, you hate all want to yeah. be a, man. That woman, Whitney, was at the store every fucking day. You know the the hurdles. I started at the store. You know the hurdles she has to hop over? You know, she's a woman. She looks good. She's around all men. Now she's trying to get on stage at the store. She's just getting yeah. fucking, you know. And she made it through all of that. That like 99.9% of people wouldn't even do. No, man. Even full-blown men would go, I'm going to start comedy and go hang at the store. You know, that's just stupid when you shit on successful people. And be around just just scumbag. Yeah, yeah fucking dirt. The, the work you have to do to get a fucking TV show. If you think that, like, just being a hot chick would get a show, every woman on Sunset Strip yeah, would have a show I know, right dude. now. Right, right. So it's just jealousy, which I don't understand. It's like, why would you be mad at somebody in the business that you're in that's doing good? It just brings more people to uh, look at comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. I mean, that's like, that is the that is true. You're hundred percent right. I mean, that's like, and and that I don't know. That's that's the problem with the industry. They can't just go good. Yeah, they got to go. Well, what's what's the category so we can market it instead of being like, oh, what's the angle so we can develop it yeah. into something good? Exactly. Like people look at me and you know? they go, well, he's 49 and he's, oh, he's old. And I don't know what we do with that. You know what I mean? It's like, meanwhile, you're packing clubs and your podcast is smashing and you're yeah. doing pretty good sets. You know, you should look at it like. 
hey, man, I bet we could get something. There's people out there, you know, that would be into this. I'm not just saying me, but you got to look outside the box on people. Well, also, like, I mean, like, maybe this is, you know, uh, me, I, 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 I'm, I'm when it comes to aging, especially in comedy, yeah. especially or in entertainment, to me, it's like you said you're 49, but like you, I, you don't. You never strike me as like an old guy. Yeah, the material's not forty nine. Yeah, or 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 the material's just not old. Like uh, aging to me, truthfully, I believe we there's two sides to it. One, the physical side where we don't have a choice. Yeah, it's just sort of go. It happens, and then the actual mental side, the who you are side, and it's choice. Do you choose to one day just hang it up? And age, or do in you your choose, mind, yeah. yeah. Or do you just choose? You can choose to just not nah, fucking. I'm just gonna do me. I'm just gonna be me, and live and be young. If that and young is another category, yeah. You know, and it's just like it's all bullshit. And not to mention, I feel like in comedy or in any and any sort of uh, written like writing, uh, comedy, fucking music. music, anything where it comes from the artist, age is. Necessary, important, and and you know what I mean. Like it's vital. You have to live. Wisdom, wisdom yeah. can wisdom guides all of wisdom helps guide humor. You know what I mean. Like every, I think every me it happened to me, and I'm I maybe but I'm thinking maybe everyone else too. I think the first person who ever truly made me laugh was my fu- like an old fucking relative of mine. Exactly. You know right? what I mean. Like old guys. Old guys. Yeah. Just, Old guys. It's always the mechanic or something, a guy at the when I worked construction. They would have all these fucking funny stories because they've lived, you know. Seen things. Yeah, and you're going like, God, that guy's so, your uncle's funny. Everybody has that funny uncle that didn't get married is just the radical, you know. Yeah, man, and that's like, that's the thing. Like, the business now, you know, you, you travel like I do, like. You see that comedy's everywhere. Yeah, that every town's got a comedy club, and every, you know, I was I was telling this story on stage last night, but it's fucking true. Like there was, I was on I was on you porn. Yeah, and the fucking a porn site is holding a competition where they want the they want to find the dirtiest comedian online. Yeah, and you submit, you can submit and win a chance to co-headline. <laughs> At the world famous comedy store, yeah, in Los Angeles, all expense paid trip. Whoa, and it's fucking crazy. Because you porn, you porn, you're running a, com- you're running a like, comedy contest. It's a fucking porn site. <laughs> you already got your thing. Yeah, and you know what's funny is I, I watched a couple of those clips, and there was a guy, um, I recognized from before I started comedy. I was living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I had dropped out of college and was just kind of living, fit, trying to figure it out. And I and I would go to the Funny Bone in Baton Rouge just to watch shows. And you know some of the guys were good, some of them were terrible. Yeah. But one of the guys who was pretty good, um, actually, if I'm being honest, I remember like he killed. Yeah. But I can also remember like wondering like, man, I just don't think any of this is that funny. But everyone else is loving this, and it started making me question, like, shit, is something wrong with me? Yeah. Should I be even considering doing this? Yeah, you I know? get it. I you get know? what you're saying, yeah. yeah because, like, you know, people have dark sense right. of humor, as I always say, and that's what I feel I have, a dark sense of humor. Right. And he's like, like I said, he wasn't bad, and but like I just remember like the shit he did on stage was very, like... Surface. I didn't, and I didn't realize that then. Yeah. You know, I was fucking 21 years old, just sort of like, huh... Am I wait? Does do the things I think f- are funny, or is it? Are they not? Fuck, or are they? And this are these people wrong? I don't know. Which was funny that then the next year I would be like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but uh, I saw he he had submitted a clip. I saw that guy, and it was like, holy shit, that fucking dude. That's hilarious. Yeah, that from like, like what fifteen years fifteen years ago, years ago. and wow. I'm like, he submitted. And I watched his entire clip, and it was like the same shit. It was like the same, like... <laughs> oh, the same bits? Pretty much, like the same, just sort of like, you know, not a bad bit, but very surface yeah. level. And it was very just like, man, this dude's trying to get on the fucking the U-porn to win a chance to perform at the world. And that's that's the other thing. 
and you because you know it's just you porn setting this up. Right? Yeah, oh, totally. And, They're gonna like, rent the room, right? And what but they, they make it look like the comedy stars doing the contest. God, and what they don't, and what they don't realize, these poor fucking guys who win this competition, yeah. is that they're going to be thrown to the goddamn wolves. Yeah. Because they don't realize that they're going to they're gonna show up and with... And I want... You know, look, dude, there's, there's a certain point where they say never judge a book by its cover. That's, that's only true. That's true unless you've read enough books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At a certain point, you get to be like, oh, no, I can tell what kind of book that's going to yeah. be. Yeah. And, like, when you're watching a guy headlining, a, you know, some f- fucking... I can, zizzles or some dumb fucking club in Columbus, Ohio, and they're going on stage. You can almost turn the volume off, yeah, and just and be like, "Oh, here's a guy who's overweight who's talking about how because he's a fat guy, he can he eats a lot of pussy, yeah. just like fat chicks suck a lot of dick." You know, yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I see, you know I, the premises. I see where this is going. Yeah, and uh, but these guys are they're going to get. Two of these guys, to, they're going to fucking headline the comedy store. Yeah. And the audience isn't going to give a flying fuck because in the next room, Rogan or, you know. CK? Anyone. Chris Rock? Anyone is yeah. in the next room running there doing 15. Of real. Of real <sighs> shit. And they're going to think like, well, I'm doing the comedy store. And they're going to tell people like, come check me out at the comedy store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the more they promote, the more they're only leading to their own yeah. like eventual spiritual demise. It's well, fucking um, I remember when I was starting com- comedy, I was, uh, I was reading this Kinison thing. And he's like, don't any advice. And his advice was don't do comedy contests. Oh, yeah. 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 And and I, I didn't really understand what he was talking about until I did one, and I was just, just like, wow, fucking, he's so... I didn't read it till after I did one. And everything that he said yeah. about the contest it happened to me, you know? He's like, how are you... Uh, you're, you're letting three people, judges, in the whole world say you're not funny? Yeah. Uh, like a lot of people on America's Got Talent or whatever... You got three people, and then they go, sorry, you just didn't win. And most of America goes, well, they should know. They're, they're in the business, so I guess the guy's not funny. Instead of making your own decision, you know? Dude, exactly. And it's exactly. It's such a subjective art form. Also, what's going on behind uh, closed doors of red tape of we want a tall, good-looking guy that's right. 24. So make sure all these other guys lose. We can't market a fat young asian guy or whatever you know what i mean it's like but you can you can if, if you were marketing good exactly good <laughs> which is which is sort of like you look at someone like hbo you know like they kind of they kind of have always existed in that like you know no we just do what we do yeah you know we put up we make the shows we make you know like game of thrones i, I before that show came on there was really no good fantasy TV show ever really there. No. And then Sopranos. I mean, yeah. You exactly. know. But then like and then now Game of Thrones is crushing it and now all of a sudden there's shows like Vikings. Yeah. Wizards. You know? you know. And Vikings is a good show, but it's I I don't I don't I, I hate that argument of like you like Game of Thrones, have you seen Vikings? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It's on the history channel. <laughs> they can't you know what I mean? They don't like, have enough money. They can't they can't show gore and white walkers. And fucking naked women. Yeah. You know, like... They're... And they don't have enough money mm. to compete, you know? No. I do like all the... Um, I feel since Breaking Bad, I do like all these little shit stations taking chances on some great drama, though. They do. That is fantastic. And, and, and like, there's a, there's a lot of... There's some good TV out there, but there's also just... It's making that... It's, it's The cycle's coming back around. There's just going to be... More, there's going to be more, more garbage and more and more yeah. shows like Modern Family, which I know that show. I know people who write for that show, so I, I feel bad. But like, there are times where I've watched that show where I'm like, they're just. It's almost like they just did a carbon copy of what they did last week. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like. Well, you get into a formula after years. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know, you run out of the situations. Really, you know. That's why. That's why it's so. That's that's another, that's another reason why I just don't get. The concept. I mean, I get it. Money, marketing, ad advertising space. But why, like, a season of shows on network is like twenty two episodes. Yeah. Like, why not just ten? Yeah. How about thirteen? Right. You know, yeah. Like, like whatever. These guys, you know, and then they take a break. Yeah. Reconvene. Come up with some great stories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, just make them pump out twenty two, eleven hours. 
yeah. of shit. You yeah, know? I think the problem is, and it's going to be always be the problem is we're artists, and we're always going to want what we want on. And the stuff we went on, it's like I always said, like, yeah, I want 10 uh, Stan Hopes at the store all night. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that's that after a while, you're like, you can't have 10 of the same. You know, like I, I really wanted some more Breaking Bad, you know? Yeah. yeah like, give yeah. me some spinoffs. I, I haven't seen The Better Call Saul, but, you know. I like it. Yeah. It's I like good. it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I just said. Uh, yeah. I just think that we're artists, and we and when you like good stuff, you're all. It's always going to be tough for us. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's you know, that's I guess that's just what it is. There's always that, but it's it's like there's a there's just that double edge, like because because what I hate what I hate more than anything is this argument where you take something like uh, like what do I really what sh- what I'm trying to think of something I think is fucking garbage because there's so much of it. But I, but I'll be nice about it, not name anything by name. But like you know, you take a TV show that's fucking terrible, right? yeah. And I I will I will say like that's fucking terrible. And then someone's like, oh, you, I know someone who works on that show, and they work very hard. And it's like, so why yeah. does that make it excusable? Yeah, like the the amount of work someone puts into it, unfortunately, does not determine if it's good or bad. Yeah, I mean, motherfucking. I mean, I know people hate this. Hitler worked hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every fucking, you know, every terrorist works real hard. Yeah. Or, or, or how about every fucking monster Republican? You know, fucking yeah. Dick Cheney worked hard. What like, about? Uh, there's you know? a lot of hard work on Miley Cyrus. Exactly. But that don't mean <laughs> shit. It's like it. I hate that argument of just people being like, "Yeah, man," like, but or like you know, me complaining about like. You know, these fucking idiot, uh, some of these, you know, TV execs just fucking more like, yeah, but they got families. They got a family. They got to yeah. do what's right. Why does that matter? Yeah. Why does, like, why does the quality have to decrease because you're sub, you're turning it into like, but, you know, come on, these people got fi- mouths to feed. Yeah. It's like, well, then they should have got into the fucking, in, into a different industry yeah, where yeah. it wasn't about quality, it was about output. Yeah, work so, at Apple. Know? Work at, yeah, work at fucking Work for Monsanto. <laughs> I'll tell you what I do now. And somebody taught me this because I used to shit on Bieber. And I talk about it on my podcast a lot. I used to just ridicule bad music. Uh-huh. And then he said, hey, man, you, you need that shit music because the money spills off and some, you know, like Queens of the Stone Age gets to make a record or whatever. Uh-huh. And when he started uh, opening my eyes about, uh, of course, I was in the music biz all my life. I understand what he's saying. You have to have the shit that makes the big, big money to let some yeah. of the little guys go. So what he said to me was, what you want to do is promote what's great, not what you hate. And so right. I, right. I started backing this where I don't talk about stuff I don't like anymore because you're just giving it more, yeah. more, more fear because uh, people are like, I love it. So fuck you. Just always talk about the great stuff. Promote what's great, not what you hate. True. And if you do that, you're never, and, and as, as hippie as it sounds, you never, uh, in a negative form, and you start to, like, you're spreading the word nonstop of good stuff. True. Like, man, you got to get this Dylan album. Instead of going, man, fuck Bieber. Instead, right. I just go, have you heard Dylan, Desire record? You yeah. know, one more cup of coffee. And they've been, no, I haven't. And, and, right. I, and you know what? I'm evil as you. I love it. Fuck everything. But then I was like, all right. I don't want to be that bitter old man. Where sure, yeah, but also, but also, here's here's the thing. I guess what I my in my fucking altruistic like, I just wish that a, years ago, whenever it happened, whenever like there was a decision, of being like, okay, in the in the record industry, for example, we use that being like, all right, do we this this artist is garbage. This is terrible. Yeah, but. It'll probably make a lot of money because people are stupid. Yeah. And I wish someone at that meet, meet, meeting would have spoke up and been like, hold on a second, though. If we do this, it's going to set off a never-ending chain of event of terrible, terrible, terrible shit yeah. that the good stuff needs to succeed so it can get some of the money. Yeah. How about we shut this garbage down now and we only put good out? Yeah. That way, these idiots will eventually have to adapt to good. Yeah, that's a great point. You know what I mean? Because what you say, what you say is like, there is no garbage out there. So either you like good or you just don't listen to music. 
Exactly. You know what I mean? And then, and then eventually you like, because that's the thing. The biggest fucking Bieber fan out there. Yeah. Um, I guarantee, okay, you said Dylan. Yeah. I guarantee you play Dylan, a non, you play Dylan, you play a Bob Dylan album for the biggest Bieber fan out there. They're going to like a song. Yeah. Something's going to catch them. Yeah. You, you play a Neil Young album. Yeah. You know, or even today's music. You play a fucking, you know, uh, who, who am I loving musically these days? I can't even fucking think. Yeah. Right now you play. Or, I mean, you know, I'm from the '90s, but you play like a built to spill album. Yeah, yeah. For a Bieber fan, they're gonna a, a song's gonna catch, and it's like they're. They, it's not like they just can't uh, yeah. get good music. They yeah. just aren't subjected to it. Exactly. And, it's not pushed down their throat. You know, and, I mean, and it's I, not sexy. Right, right. You know, and it's it's one of those. You know, you want. I mean, dude. Like, I, I remember the first time I heard Gogo Bordello. I was like, why the f- fuck wasn't this played at like prom? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. This, this gypsy rock. Yeah, right. You know, like my like this is just. I mean, you could dance to this. Yeah, this is fucking high energy, crazy fucking gypsy rock and shit like that. But it's like no, instead they're playing, you know, Chris Brown. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, those are two different eras. But you know, yeah, yeah, like, I understand what you're saying though. And it's know? like the same. And it's like the same thing with like like when you hear about. And I might be wrong. And anybody listening to this who's a huge film buff, I apologize in advance if I'm wrong. Yeah. This is just how I know it to be. Is that the whole reason 70s cinema is amazing yeah. is because the industry didn't give a shit about what was happening. They were so concerned about TV yeah. ruining film that they were like, all right, artists, be artists now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give you free reign because yeah. we don't know what else to do. Yeah. And... Some of the greatest films thus far. In Only life the greatest films were made from like sixty-eight to eighty-one. Right, right, and it saved. It, it basically put moved. It put film on top of television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you see. Yeah, yeah. Because only good shit was made, so people were only getting to choose between like, uh, do I go see Jaws or do I go see uh, Annie Hall? Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Do I go see Star Wars or do I go see Yep Platoon? Yeah, yeah. You know, do I Apocalypse go Apocalypse Now or, or the Sting or Network? <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Nashville or, exactly, or Godfather? Exactly. exactly you know? man. Shit, Serpico. It's, yeah, or you know, it's like <laughs> Exorcist. Exactly. You know what I mean? Fucking uh, the, what was the one with the French Connection? Yeah. Or or, or let's just go see French Chinatown Connection. or Chinatown. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like when. So you see how people responded when they were just flooded with actually good shit. It went great for everyone. Yeah. So it's like, why? Also, it made me uh, yeah. who I am now. Mm-hmm. Like, as a kid, I was seeing One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, man. I was seeing fucking, you know, Urban Cowboy was even, would be like a a like a, a mainstream film. Right. But it was still good. Like, the story, you know? I was like, well, that's pretty interesting, you know? Dude, it's- yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember this. I remember, like, early 90s. I, I remember, like, here's the thing. When I was a young kid, like, in the early 90s, early teens, like, I didn't think anything was funny. Yeah. Like, I, I, would, I would watch old, like... You know, I'd turn on Comedy Central and it would be like, you know, like Paula Poundstone and nothing, no offense to her, it just wasn't me. It just yeah. was like, you know, Richard Lewis. I was like, I don't get this, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then like, I would watch, you know, I, I can't even tell you a comedy movie I saw then, but it just nothing, I didn't, I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't, what is funny about this? Yeah. And I remember seeing Caddyshack. Unbelievable. For the first time. Yeah. Young kid. And being blown away by how just like ridiculous and stupid it was. Yeah. And then years later seeing the state on MTV. Yeah. And being like, holy shit. And then years after, well, not years after that, around the same time, seeing Mr. Show. Mr. Show. Which I still, I still say is my biggest comedic influence. Yeah, wow. Is that okay. TV show. Okay. Like watching that and just being like, motherfucker. Yeah. But it took Caddyshack. Yeah. To make me care. Yeah, you know, and it took comedy wise, it took um, stand up comedy wise, it took a comedian named Ralph Harris. Ralph Harris, yeah, that got you going. That that. And how old are you at the time? Fifteen. Fifteen. He his his half hour HBO half hour special, like it's you know he look he's a fucking urban comedian. I think these days works cruise ships and shit. Yeah, but I met him in Montreal years ago. And I knew exactly who he was. No one else knew who he was. Right. And I, I beeline and was just like, I, I want you to know 
your half hour special, like open, like change me. That's and the one that grabbed you. And it was, and it was, and it's, and I've watched it since. It's, you know, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's standard urban comedy, yep. but it's not that far of a departure from it. It just, he had a, you'd watch in the mid nineties, you know, I was watching a lot of deaf comedy jam. Yeah. Things like that. Cause it would just be on and you were watching the same, same bit fucking thing. And, and, and he was the first like urban comedian that I remember watching and being like, this is different. Yeah. From his time, of course. Like, yes, I would, of course, listen to Pryor and see yeah, all the yeah. Pryor stuff. I'm going to be honest. I, his Pryor didn't grab me until I was already doing comedy. Right. But also because I didn't have that big. My, it wasn't like I came home and my dad would be like, sit down, son. Yeah, yeah. We're going to listen to some Pryor. Yeah, yeah. You know? And my friends, I'm a fucking, in the suburbs, we were listening to the Jerky Boys. Oh, I loved it. Love the Jerky Boys. Dude, man. Love that. I play Cobra. I play we do do Snake bite my eye. <laughs> Dude. That, I think Jerky Boys, <laughs> oh, there's okay. things in my life mm -hmm. that make me laugh so fucking hard. Oh, yeah. One of them is uh, Boys, the Toss dude. Show. Oh, yeah. yeah. I laugh at all that shit on there. Yeah. Jerky Boys being another thing. Out, first two albums, man. Unbelievable. That kind of fucking stupid mm -hmm. comedy where you're... Sp I, it's something about how dumb America can look. When, and it makes me laugh so fucking hard. I can remember getting in a... It was, it was, the, it was, it was ritual. Like, get off of school, me and my... Two bud, two or three friends, depending on how many could fit into a car. Fucking marijuana, driving around, yeah, listening to Jerky Boys. It's insane, now, right? Where are you going? No. Should I bring my tools? Yeah, you know, man. There was also there was uh, tapes that floated around that were incredible, like Reds, that one that like Simpsons do, yeah, you know, yeah. Reds, you know. And then you, uh, Paige, Mike Hunt, Mike Hunt, Mike yeah. Hunt, you know. <laughs> and there was another one that went around in the Bay Area where it was a guy would call uh, uh, ads in the recycler, like, you looking for a bass player? Yeah. And he, you ever hear that one? I'll play bass licks on your grave. The guy's like out of his <laughs> mind, man. There's those kind of tapes that are so, oh. um, you're so uh, young. You know, even like 20 to me is young. You're laughing, you're drinking, you're, you're getting high, and you're just going, this shit is the best. You remember that, too, when like, I mean, like, things had to circulate. They yeah, circulate. Oh, yeah, like a Metallica yeah, well, demo tape. Yeah, it was you, grassroots. You don't get it on, there's no online. No. You no. had to like know, there's number, you had to like call a number sometimes. Yeah, yeah, remember Jesus that? Jesus Christ. And guys would be like, have you heard this? And they'd have it on cassette. Sets, and and my buddy had a cassette of all different kinds of prank tapes, uh, crank calls and stuff. And I would just fucking die on this shit, man. Oh, yeah, man. He said we could, he, we, we could rub sand on my ass neck. <laughs> we could step on piss clams. <laughs> I, I, I love when he's like, on piss clams? hey, turn your music down. <laughs> this is your neighbor. Where are you at? I'm next door. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> you know, that shit, man. He's like, You're right next door? Yeah, I'm right next door. <laughs> so man, those guys. I read a big thing on them on, uh, in Spin Magazine where they battled for money and shit. It just got dark later uh, on. Yeah. Even right now, like a year ago. Really? Remember they did a movie? I saw the movie yeah. in theaters. Wow. I was six, 15 years old. Saw was that it? movie in theaters. I can't even remember. Was it cartoon? No. No. Live it, action. Whoa, live action. Fucking Alan Alda was the bad guy. Wow. It was the Frank Rizzo. No, it was the guy that they were, they, Frank Rizzo, was, they made him a real character. But he was, yeah, it was, it was those guys just like using their phone persona, personas. That's insane. To pull shit off and rob, cheat the mafia. It was bad, of course, but. That, I read something where, where the tape sold something like 10 million, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. It, I mean, imagine the money. It cost no money to make None. it. Not, no money. Not. It was done for a zero. No money. A cassette tape. Yeah. And then they put it out 10 million, you know? Jesus. That's, and they're still fighting. They're still fighting over money. Jesus, man. The 90s. But yeah, like fucking seeing. What, is, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh, Harold yeah. Wentz. But yeah, just. I guess it's like good, good. Yeah. And that's, that's what I wish, like, a lot of these fucking idiot, you know, t like. TV execs would stop focusing on like because what they've done is they've turned a beautiful craft into a business. Yeah, and the problem with that is <clears throat> now look at it. Now it's like 
there's nothing a, you know every there's so many fucking comedians just ripping off one another yeah. and regurgitating the same bullshit and getting spots and god bless them because one day the second comedy bust will happen and those of us who care about it will still be standing that's right but that's like right. but like at the same time it's like if 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 it were just if, if if I don't know, fucking you you were talking AMC. I mean, they're pretty good at it. But like, if Comedy Central was just like, no, we don't care about. We're not focus grouping shit anymore. Yeah, whatever. There's eight of us in here. We're adults. Yeah, we're eight adults. We decide what goes on TV and what doesn't. Do can we agree? Yeah, that we eight of us think this is funny and believe in our fucking selves enough. Yeah. and the artists are behind it. So yeah. that makes twelve of us total. Let's just put it out there. Yeah, yeah. And give it two seasons. God yeah. damn it, two fucking seasons. And with no fucking notes. Yeah, it's just like... I mean, look here, dude. Mm-hmm. I can walk in. I'm 49 years old. Yeah. I can tell you right now, in a fucking couple minutes, exactly who I think are some of the greatest original guys in town. You know, yeah. I'm looking at Roy Scovel. I love you. Uh, you. Mark Marin, uh, Pete Holmes, Ari Shafir, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Pemberton, John. uh, uh, Josh Fadum, you know, all these guys that are completely different styles yeah. and uh, T.J. Miller, you know, you see him and you go, absolutely, that guy's fucking hilarious, you know, right, right. and it's pretty easy to see. The great shit, because you go like, oh, well, these guys are completely original. Right. You know, they're doing like when you do stand up, you, you're not doing fucking Facebook joke. You're telling no. intricate, badass stories like you just went to Cuba. And, and I'm watching it going like, OK, this guy's great. You know, you're just yeah. like these guys are all dudes that I'm I uh love you know and and then of course you're sitting there going like how come the entire planet doesn't know these guys but it's just like Mm -hmm. i mean they're starting to know them but it's just like all the great records i have sitting over there you're like you know what do you mean you don't know this band you know it blows me away you know you know this guy here but you don't know this that's where he took that from (laughs) you know there is no this without that that's it Right, right i'm like you don't fucking love this guy's comedy but you like no this Bieber guy? without Elvis. Exactly. If you want to go back that, that fucking one hundred percent, man. Yeah, you know, like you know. I don't mean. Then again, it's like fuck. Where did that go wrong? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where did that train? Well, it just went with move, hip yeah, movements yeah. and looks. With Dan, like, like, yeah, there. That was the thing. Like people, like I mean, I I, I wonder how many people. Uh, it's like Elvis has been, you know, Elvis impersonators and the oh yeah. uh-huh, and all that shit. Yep. But it's like, man, if you listen, to, if you listen to some fucking deep Elvis cuts, yeah, whoo, oh yeah, There's, get rid of the surface hound oh, dog man. stuff, you get, yeah, and, you know, get into that you in my home, yeah, you know, like, that stuff. You're like, whoa, yeah. he could fuck. I mean, probably a song. It's pretty popular, but like, suspicious minds, uh, unbelievable. Like, but like, you, you, if you really listen to that song, it's about like a fucking crumbling relationship due to two people who just can't trust each other anymore. yeah it's so great man and it's a fucking beautiful song and it but like that's probably his most popular deep cut i would say yeah you know suspicious I mean? like, minds like it's that. great and, but like that's like you think of all these dipstick fucking elves impersonators who are impersonating one specific yeah, blue suede shoes and yeah, hound dog exactly that's it the move the look and everything yeah. i like fat elvis yeah, you know, when he was just more shit. like a, where he was like, it was like fat Jim Morrison to me. L.A. Woman is incredible. That's like the end era, you know, yeah. where he's kind of bigger with the beard and shit. And he's like, hey, I'm not here <laughs> for your fucking, uh, to be your sex goddess. I'm, I'm a blues singer. I'm you not, know? I broke my hip. I can't shake it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you you grew up in New Orleans? That like you were you born there and shit. I was yeah I was, uh, I, I, was bo- I grew up like if if for those for the for the Nola files that listen to you I was I I grew up in Chalmette and then Slidell and then uh, but all my family's from like Lakeview and my parents are from the Ninth Ward and I myself lived in the Irish Channel for years. Um, like when you're when you're growing like that's the thing like I did. If you're a kid growing up any in the suburbs of New Orleans, yeah. you're in New Orleans every weekend. Right. You know, without your parents' permission. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I grew up half an hour north of the city, but spent, I, I mean, my dad has a business in the city. My mom worked in the city. All my f- 
cousins and shit were there. So I was there. I mean, I, I it's still my favorite place on earth. I still go back four, year, four or five times a year. And and mm-hmm. did you get into the music there? Are you into that 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 music? You know, uh, Bourbon Street, that whole old well, school jazz. Like that's it's interesting because Bourbon Street. By the time I was able to be on Bourbon Street or just old enough to start going there, I mean, it was you know, jazz is something like that. It does. It, I haven't. I I. I ne- Live jazz isn't really a thing in New Orleans. Anymore. Yeah, it's all about brass bands. Now. Right, exactly. But there was a there was a cup. There's like a place called Snug Harbor, which is a very famous jazz club. But it wasn't really jazz. Like yeah. you think you go and like it's not like Oakland jazz no, or are, or you know like uh, uh, you know somewhere in New York mm-hmm. deep in in like right. And even those places, like you know, you got to go to like deep Chicago or Detroit. Yeah, to find an actual jazz club anymore. Yeah, right. Where where, where, where where it's a collection of musicians actually just riffing. Yeah, Miles Davis. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, know. you got like the Marcellus fam or uh, the Marcellus family in New Orleans, but they're up there doing fucking rehearsed, orchestrated pieces. You know what I mean? Everything's like, trombone short, right? Now, right. right? Trombone, yeah, and trombone short, he's great. But he's awesome. But, but I'm saying very, everybody's yeah, yeah, doing yeah. that, right? Um, I mean, there's a guy in uh, the. the um, Oh come to fucking on! I'm a, how can I, I'm gonna blank on his name now, and that's just goddamn. Oh Kermit Ruffins, yeah, he's a uh, jazz musician in New Orleans, and he's fucking awesome. Um, but when you watch him on stage, he that's a song. That's a yeah. That's a song he wrote. He's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you, and it's great, and it's awesome, and he fucking kills it on the trumpet, and he's he's you know he's, he's as New Orleans as it comes. Um, he's got a diamond encrusted trumpet. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, got, I got to play it once. Wow, he let me burp. He let me fucking blow into it. He's amazing. What kind of crime you see down there, man? Crime? Can, like, well, like, oh, if, yeah. like you were hanging at night. Like when I'm a kid, I hung in San Fran in the streets, and you see the underbelly of it. You know, yeah. Not, not as a tourist, like you know the side streets, you know the yeah. side style and stuff. Like I, I go a lot. For, uh, I told you I'd go for Voodoo Fest and stuff. Yeah. But you know, you're just seeing the uh, shiny parts. But there's got to be some dark shit oh, around yeah, there, man. right? Man, I mean, like there's there's definitely like you're you're kind of. Unfortunately for me, I was able to avoid most of it, but like you know where it lies, and you yeah. know where it is, and you know like that's like I, the, that's the problem why they can't put a fucking lid on the crime in New Orleans is because it's not there is no one area. Yeah, it's such a spread out all over that city. You know, crimes it's an untraceable pattern, and you got fucking just you know random acts, and plus the fucking New Orleans. In the, the NOPD is as corrupt as it comes. I mean, that's that state's always been corrupt as shit. And now you got that fucking moron Bobby Jindal running the show, and he's just a complete goddamn trash bag. Yeah, like he's just a he's a he's a fucking moron. Yeah, like I've never disliked a, pol- a politician as much as I dislike Bobby Jindal. Right? Just is he the, just fucking it up? I mean, After Katrina, really, it's just crazy there, it's, right? It, yeah, I mean, no, I mean. It kind of the ship kind of righted itself a little bit after Katrina. Yeah, but then like Bobby, you put you can't put a guy like that in charge of anything because he's he's pandering so fucking hard to the right that it's bordering on psych psych. Like when when Ireland uh, okayed gay marriage, yeah. a month ago or whatever. That yeah, was, yeah. He 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 tried to have uh, embargo on Irish imports in the state of Louisiana because his he's that right wing homophobe his argument was every time someone takes a sip of Guinness that is one more battle lost in the war for family values wow and it's like and that's another thing too it's kind of funny how only hardcore people to the right are the ones Casting the stone yeah. to use their own fucking yeah. bibliology. Family morals. It's like, no one's coming for your shit. Yeah. I mean, we're not coming to the suburbs to jerk off and fuck yeah. in your front yard. And no one's lure knocking your on your door to fuck. Yeah. Stay there. Yeah. We're not. They're all in the French fine. Quarter having we're good times. We're staying down here doing our shit. Leave, yeah. leave us be. And that's one of the greatest things about. I remember after the storm, you had all these psychotic televangelists. televangelists Talking about God sent Katrina to spite the debauchery. Yeah. A bourbon destroy. street. And that's it's like it. The French Quarter yeah. was the one part of New Orleans that was completely unharmed. Is that right? Sustained no damage. <laughs> it got like two inches of water. Yeah. People stayed. Yeah. And had power. 
Wow. So it's like, so oh. the, yeah, the devil. Uh, I don't think yeah. he had anything to do. Or, I mean, uh, yeah. God didn't have anything God to do with it. God was like, no, I love the, f- I love yeah. them faggots. Yeah, you know, yeah. Them, yeah. Great. I, love, I love titties, yeah, fags, yeah. everything. Man. Blow, yeah. smoking blood. You know, do it. Yeah, that's mm. what I always say. I always say, Sam Fran. Yeah. When I I grew up there, it was you know it was gay, yeah. it was drug addicts, and it was artists, and and. Where, it, that's when it was cool yeah. you know what happened to those people you know well i tell you what dude that's what's interesting is like i i mean, I, I love san francisco i feel like there's a there's definitely like a a symbiosis between those two cities yeah new orleans and absolutely and in san francisco it's just like you know like there's definitely that like san francisco i think fared a little better for a while with like education yeah and you yeah, know education big time yeah. Yeah, yeah like like new orleans education is fucking Louisiana is just pathetic. Yeah. And it's 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 hopefully getting better, but I don't think it is. But uh Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a crime riddled city still to this day. Yeah. It's fucking I could feel it when yeah. I was walk uh, when I walk yeah. around in there at night. I could see people, you know, they're prowling. Mm-hmm. You know, whenever you have a lot of uh drinking people, yeah. tourists and uh, you're going to have some crime of, yeah. of shit crime, you know. Uh, drug dealing, fake drugs, uh, pickpocketing, robbing, yeah. uh, you know, oh, yeah. fights, all that stuff, which gives it a, a radical vibe down there, man. Oh, yeah. There's definitely like a, uh, it definitely at times, I mean, I'm from there, and but, I, but I've been down there at times where it's like, man, this, you know, you're, you're three in the morning, yeah. you're stumbling around, you're fucking drunk, and you're seeing some of these people and you're like, I kind of want to, I wish I was a sober superhero right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Some of these fucking people are going to get took. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're being idiots right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly, being right? Fucking morons right yeah, now. Yeah, man. You know? It's like Hollywood Boulevard to me. Yeah. You know? It's like, what are you doing? Look around oh, real quick. Jesus. It's shiny buildings, yeah. but look at the people. You know? I mean, like, there was, there was, there was, I mean, this is the, the best story I have to really relate. It, when I was, my sister, basically, with my little brother, my brother's way younger than me. When he was 17, I was in New Orleans. This was in 2010. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was 17. <clears throat> he wanted to go to a strip club yeah. for the first time. He'd never been. And I was like, you know, being your older brother, that is my duty. Yeah. To yeah. take you to your first strip club at 17. That is your duty. But we can't go to anywhere on Bourbon Street. Yeah. That's just, they're, they're a little too high profile there. So we're going to have to go to an off bourbon strip club. Yeah. You know? And where they're not going to ID. Where, or they're a little, yeah. Like, oh, basically, yeah. if I could, uh, an off bourbon strip club, you'd think of it as like an off Broadway theater. Yeah. Like it's a, they, you know, they just need some customers. Right. right. <laughs> you're going to walk in, you're like, why is there tarp on the ground? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and is that a wolf? Is there, why are they pumping in sounds of a wolf howling? <laughs> but we go, we're, we're walking to this place and we're, we're coming from my sister's rehearsal dinner. Yeah. So we're both wearing, we're both dressed up. He's clean shaven. My brother is basically, uh, to put it like, if we're like, I'm Danny DeVito, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger in right. the film Twins. Whoa, man. You see what I'm saying? Like a different look. Yeah, that like, much? exactly. Like, same mom and dad? Same parents. Insane. But my brother, I mean, he's not, you know, I'm 5'9, he's six foot. Wow. So he's like, or like 5'11 maybe, but he's like, he's taller, he's just more svelte. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he looks, he doesn't look. He's never looked young. Yeah, he never looked like a child. He's always looked. There's like always a, that guy in high school that can buy beer. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. And um, so we go to this place called Dixieland Divas. Um, again, for those N- Nola people listening, you know that place is a fucking shithole. <laughs> and I re- I remember walking up. I'm like, if the guy asks for your ID, just give him your fucking ID yeah. and act like you're 21. Yeah. Like, just give it to him. He probably isn't going to look at the age. He's probably just got to be seen yeah, looking at camera. it for a camera. Yeah. And we walk up, and the guy, my brother's smoking a cigarette, and the bouncer's like, you got another one of those? My brother gives him a cigarette, and that was it. Yeah. Was like, and we that go, was the ID. Right. <laughs> and we walk in, and there's and all there is is... Um, a guy and a stripper down at the end of the bar canoodling, yeah. right? And then there's a bartender, and it's one of these strip clubs where the bar 
is the stage. Oh, I, I, I know one just like that where you I grew up called about? ETs. There you You'd go. You just sit at the stage. The extraterrestrials? Yeah, yeah it was <laughs> called Everybody's Talking. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was the fuck. It actually looked like they built it for a movie and then said, all right, we're out of here. And then just said, well, let's just keep it open. It's just oh. one of those on a dirt lot with, in an industrial area. Like, what yes. is this? You know? That's fucking... Like straight roadhouse. But, yeah. But yeah, exactly. Ta- is it still the there? Bar is, it's still there, man. E.T.'s. Wait, where? In Up in the Bay Area. Up in the Bay? Yeah, yeah. Santa Rosa area. I want to check that you out. You got to see it, dude. I want to see that shit. I'll actually Google it when we're done. Yeah, yeah. crack up. But um, so we're there, and the, the bartender is just... I've never seen a more checked out bar. You know when like, a bartender is just like... That bartender is back there smoking cigarettes. And this was 2010, like... Smartphones weren't as dominant. Yeah. Like, so I remember she wasn't even on a smartphone. She was just fucking, she had like a flip phone. Yeah. And we're stripper like, phone, I call Hello. it. Hello. You know, like, <laughs> oh, yes, thanks for the, thanks for servicing us. And then the stripper comes out and she's this fucking gorgeous, gorgeous stripper. And she just sits down and starts talking to us, basically, yeah. like sits on the stage. And the conversation was very like, what are you two guys doing in here? You shouldn't be in this fucking shithole kind yeah. of. Yeah. And we're both kind of like, yeah, wh- th- this is the subtext of our conversation. Like, what the fuck are you doing in here? You're far too gorgeous yeah. for a shithole like this. And basically, she sort of explains to us that, like, strippers in New Orleans, they pick up shifts at other clubs. Oh, like, like open mics when I go do exactly, open mics. Exactly. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, I just picked this one up. It kind of sucks. And it was like a Tuesday night or something. Yeah. Wasn't it? No one in there. Right. And we're just talking with her, and it's fun. And then she buys us a round of drinks. Wow. She never fucking sees strippers do that. Never. And we're just talking. We're just basically, I'm basically, like, to my brother in my head thinking, like, man, this is. Oh, yeah. And at one point, uh, she she's leaning over the bar talking to bartender. I'm like, this is a very fucking awesome strip club experience. You never get an amazingly hot stripper like this. Yeah. Just talking to you and buying you drinks. And he's like, wow, this is great. Yeah, let your brother know right yeah. away. The next one, you're going to mm-hmm. be robbed. <laughs> and then we look, and then all of a sudden there's some commotion. Or just, we, I notice at the end of the bar that that stripper and that guy are now fucking. Whoa. And he's got her bent They're over. They're fucking. They're fucking. But basically, like, she's <laughs> bent over the stool facing us. Yeah. And he's just behind her pounding. Wow. Right? And we were like. Holy fucking shit, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. And we're both, we're always kind of like, I'm like, and he sees it. And I'm like, no, no, don't, don't, don't make a big deal of this. Just chill, yeah. chill, chill. And then the stripper we're talking to, like, looks over and sees it. And Sade, that's her name. That's yeah. her name. Yeah. Uh, spelt like, spelt like the singer. Yeah, smooth operator. Yeah, exactly. And she, uh, she looks over and kind of giggles. She's like, yeah, that happens. <laughs> that happens here. Uh, and it didn't happen so much when she was a man. Whoa! And then I fucking whip my head back over, and I stare at this. Then she, and I stare at this woman getting fucked, and it was almost like one of those paintings where you now. Nah, sorry. Oh, oh, where, oh yeah, yeah, one of those ones where you look all and, it up, and, and it, it turns into and the something shit, else. Yeah, it was yeah. like oh, the high cheekbones, the oh, the throat. Oh, yeah, you know, like oh god, that was that was a man. Whoa. And uh, so he's just doing him in the butt. He just well, I, I, I may, or maybe she was just freshly post op. Who knows? Wow. But he's just fucking. And me, my brother and I, my brother knows at first, but the dude's wearing a fucking universe, a Bama, yeah, sweatshirt. Whoa, right? And my brother just sort of like, and I thought it was pretty quiet. He just goes, "Huh, roll tide," and then the guy. Heard it, yeah, and go roll tide. Like, no still way. Has a Bama fucking no guy. No way. Still just couldn't. <laughs> ah, you know, yeah, he's fucking a <laughs> prostitute. Yeah, or a, or a, or a, he still had to do this. He team still had to roll out. tide, and we fucking laugh our asses off. Tip this stripper big, and we're like, let's get the fuck out of here, dude. Dude. And as we leave, I, when we get out in the street, I'm like, did I just ruin it for you? Yeah. Did I just fuck you up, man? Yeah. Am I the brother who took his old younger brother in a strip club and he saw fucking? Yeah. Did, did I just fuck you up? Yeah. And he laughs his ass off. And then right there on the street, on his Blackberry, yeah. I see uh, two girls, one cup for the first time. Oh. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You have you have access yeah. to anything. Yeah, yeah, he's seen Nothing that. I can show you in person will fuck you up. That is awesome story. But, but that story uh, is the reason I say uh, the example, oh, sorry, was two nights later Yeah. after... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, two nights later, the night before my sister's wedding, two nights later, 
we are uh I was just out in New Orleans and I saw that same fucking guy. Whoa. Bama. And, I mean everything. Like he I, I like it was like he hadn't changed, he was wearing a sweater still. Ooh. So that same fucking guy sitting on the curb, handcuffed, bloodied up in the face, like he just got the <laughs> shit beat out of him. Oh. And another guy handcuffed as well. So it wasn't the cops who did it, but yeah. a fight. And they had them both sitting on the curb and they were taking statements from the bar tenors, and I was like, Yep. This is just some fucking idiot. Yeah. From just, some Bama dipshit who came to New Orleans. Just fighting in the... In the uh, yeah, getting the shit kicked out of Because the other guy didn't look too roughed up. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this guy probably came here like, I'm going to bang this broad. And, yeah. I, and I'm gonna, this guy's giving me lip. I'm going to let him know. And it's like... He's no. going to go home and this is going to be the story. <laughs> I went to New Orleans. I fucked the hottest chick you've ever seen. And I yeah. beat the shit out of a dude. That's yep. going to be the story. Uh, <laughs> Sort of, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you did a man, and you got beat up. <laughs> yeah, you had fucking t- unless you consider beating up another guy being bloodier than him. Yeah, yeah. I look at me, man. I yeah. took it worse than he did. Oh my god, dude, yeah, that fucking idiot. But that's that's Bama fans in general, dude. Thanks for doing the show, <laughs> man. I love I love you, man. I'm so glad uh, I tried to get you, you on for like a year. I, it was a fucking honor to do this. And one. I love working, uh, doing. We did a, a fun show uh, last Saturday. We did. We did. That was fun. Uh, what do you got coming up? Um, I'm gonna be on season two of the Meltdown. Oh, sick! That'll. I think that airs at the end of the month. I absolutely love Jonah Ray, man. It's just oh, yeah, it's and fun, I, man. I, I just love uh, what people don't understand. To build something from the ground up from is so up, fucking man. hard. And yeah. then to do it and make it, like you said, keep it good, you know? Right. Keep uh, your fucking... Hats off to that guy. They did Camel, a great thing. Man, yeah. They, you know? they, they created something And amazing. Emily, they, got, they just yeah. got a fucking great, great thing down there. Yeah. I think that's the best thing I love about alt rooms is the people in there. It's not dates. It's not drinks. It's not that. It's comedy. Yeah. I mean, I have seen like... Uh, I mean that show is every week, yeah. Packed to the rafters, yeah. And they're not short shows, no. They're two and a half hour shows yeah. sometimes, but they're great because every comedian's going up there a game in it, yeah. You know, and I did it my first time two weeks ago. There you go. And it's like uh, a highlight in my five and a half year career. You yeah, know? it's amazing room, and but I've also seen like some you know pretty famous. I've seen more than once some pretty famous you know comedians. Who are just so used to clubs and shit? Yeah, go in there and spend the first three minutes of their set just trashing the whole, con- trashing like, well, they, there's not even booze, and you guys are here in the back of a comic book shop. Yeah, what are you doing? What is this shit? And then of course, bomb. Yeah, it's two hundred comedy fans. Yeah, who are serious? Who fans. are you have their entire focus and attention? Yeah, and you're gonna shit on them for not drinking and being in the back of a room for free. It's weird. Watch to watch, yeah. you know. It's like this is dumb. You're- it's like when I, I I was on the road once and I watched the headliner. I fe- featured had a great set, and I watched the headliner come on and just go, "How do you guys live in this shit fucking city, man? What are you fucking doing here? This place is ass, man." And then an hour he's got to do now. He opened with that, and now he just tore their city apart where they work, live, sleep, and, and been raised, and they're down. They paid to see him, yeah. and he trashed the city. And they're like, oh, we're going to enjoy this. Oh, it was insane. I was like, oh, well, those are things uh, when you're on the road, you start to learn. You go, oh, well, that's something you don't ever want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you you know? do that at the end of your set. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you crush it. <laughs> yeah. You get them loving you. And then yeah. you're like, by the way, <laughs> this, this place <laughs> sucks. Let's Move. go eat at Denny's. And then you go out. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. Thank you, uh, man. Uh, you got uh, Twitter? Actually, yeah. Twitter is uh, it's just Mr. Sean Patton or... And it's spelled like M R Sean Patton, and uh, my website. I think I said earlier. Sean Oliver Patton. Sean Patton. dot com. Yeah, and you know, hey, I'm, I'm doing. I'm trying to. You know what I'm trying to do? Yeah, good. Yeah, right. Good. Trying to make more good. Let's just do that. Let's it, just make good. Then if we see each other and we're yeah. not doing good, go. You're not doing good right now. Yeah, right. right? That's you gotta a, get back to the good. That's a good because you need yeah. a guy that's a barometer. Yeah, right. Like Dean. 
Look, man, <laughs> your fucking show, <laughs> your show where you play an older Bieber. Yeah, come on, man. I got kids <laughs> and a family, man. You that know? doesn't mean anything. I got a mortgage now, yeah. man. I got a mortgage. When someone says so I got a mortgage Gorbit, yeah. now, I say burn that fucking piece of paper and get back in the streets. Oh, I'm sorry. You should be able to make awful fucking racist yeah. jokes. Then, I got a mortgage. You have a mortgage. Yeah, Fuck it's you. fucking says, Dan. Yeah. All right, there he is, Sean Patton, guys. Thanks for tuning in.